Welcome to Hannity. And tonight, the Democratic National Convention is now finally over, thankfully. But there wasn't anything really Democratic about it, was there? And Julie, in many ways, before 100,000 balloons fell from the ceiling at the United Center, the vice president's remarks aimed to frame the race as though Donald Trump is the current president. Kamala Harris was coronated after winning zero primary votes. Last night's acceptance speech was short on details, full of a lot of lies. With this election, our nation, our nation with this election has a precious, fleeting opportunity to move past the bitterness, cynicism, and divisive battles of the past, a chance to chart a new way forward. Harris did not talk about how she will pay for her plans, and she never touched on the proposal we confirmed earlier this week, raising the corporate tax rate to 28 percent. But she Instead of a Trump tax hike, we will pass a middle class tax cut that will benefit more than 100 million Americans. We will create what I call an opportunity economy, an opportunity economy where everyone has the chance to compete and a chance to succeed. So basically, she talked about how she's going to lower taxes, Emily, for the middle class, rather than what she claims Trump was going to do, which was raise taxes. I don't believe that that is part of Trump's plan. Now, Stu Leonard joins me. He's the CEO of a popular grocery store chain. All right, Stu, welcome to the program. What will price controls do to you and the grocery business? You know, we're, we're in our family food store here. We're in the New York, New Jersey, Connecticut market. You know, we have a quarter of a million people coming through every week. And we're dealing with about 75 local farms now and, and family businesses around this area. I don't know anybody price gouging. I, I haven't heard of it. Look, if banana prices go up because of some weather situation or tomato prices go up, I, I can understand the retailers like the lady you just had on earlier. Uh, we, we have to raise our price of, of those items because of market conditions. So I have no idea how the government can regulate uh, this. Hmm. Uh, who do you blame for the price increases which g gave us a 9% inflation rate uh, earlier in this administration? Who gets the blame for that? Well, and not only will it be impossible to regulate, but... I'd also point the blame at the same people who cause this are the same people who are trying to now impose their will on this overreach of government in this push and first steps towards not making America great again and in fact turning America into a socialist communist country. A terrible, a dreadful place for people and businesses. But we don't know what Kamala Harris's plan is. She didn't mention inflation because you know this White House never utters the word inflation. Never. And so now she's got no plan, but yet she's attacking Trump's plan. Where is her plan? When are we going to see it? Ultimately, the DNC did not cave to pressure from outsiders, including the UAW, to include a pro-Palestinian speaker on stage. The Harris team can now look ahead to a debate with Trump mid-September. But her next big nationally televised event should be the interview she has promised to do by the end of this month. All right. Uh, Lee Zeldin tweeted this. Kamala Harris becomes the first candidate to become a major party presidential nominee without receiving even a single vote, without putting even a single policy on a website, which remains. There are still no policies on her website, believe it or not. And without standing for even a single press conference or even sitting for even a single interview. Madam Vice President, Hi. congratulations. Hi. Are you ready for your Fox News interview? <laughs> We don't know Kamala Harris's plan because Kamala Harris doesn't know her plan. She doesn't have a plan. And in fact, the actual plan that she's probably unaware of is way above her head, way above her pay grade. And uh, that plan does not involve you or I actually enjoying our life if this shadow government, this the deep state, is able to sink their claws in even further with a much more radical 
far, far left puppet like Kamala Harris. That is unless she too gets eliminated and another coup occurs and she's removed from the White House and then replaced by Tim Walls, which would be insane. And then who knows what happens after that. But why would they mention inflation? I mean, it's a black eye to the administration and it is a clear and easy indication and reminder to even those who are brainwashed and drinking the Kool-Aid on the left and potentially considering voting for Kamala Harris of exactly what they wouldn't want any more of moving forward, that she is in essence the direct link for the cause. And so now she's got no plan. And honestly, if anything, her plan is just that of she's in my opinion, correct me if I'm wrong here, exhibiting clear signs of the behavior of someone who is so far gone and doesn't even realize that they exude just their natural aura 24 7, 365 is victim mentality, which she then projects onto hatred for Donald Trump, ha hatred and lies for. Donald Trump and MAGA Republicans with no solid concrete evidence, proof, fact to substantiate any of her claims that are purely false and in, in fact the opposite of the truth and not just a lie but the opposite of the truth. And no, the DNC did not cave to the request and the demand of the democracy for Kamala to step up to the plate and actually have something to say, have give America a reason to vote for her, not just to remind Democrats to show up and vote, but maybe perhaps persuade Republicans and independents and others out there to consider voting for Kamala Harris. And she did not. And as far as that interview she promised by the end of the month, spoiler alert, she's already delivered it. It already happened with her and Coach Tim talking about their unseasoned taco recipes. Yeah. They called that an interview. I don't know if you guys picked up on that, but they called it an interview. And today is Saturday, August 24th, which means that we only have seven days left before the end of the month. And I'd, I'd be shocked. I will eat my words if we have any plans of any interview that she promised on her calendar between now and the 31st next Saturday. And it's because they lied, sort of. Stretch the truth, got to read between the lines a little bit. And they already gave the interview. That's why she was so confident to say that it would be delivered by the end of the month because she wasn't entirely sure when the editing would be complete, but she knew it had been recorded. That's just my take. So she's got months to prove that. He's like, why is she complaining about things that she's had the power to change and she has not done any change? She's done nothing. She's done nothing and she will continue to do nothing. Well, everything is a soft spot, right? I mean, she, she has to do this because she cannot deal with the reality, literally. It's not that she's dumb. This is a decision. This is a choice. The word salads also are distractions because it means that you don't have to deal with the reality. The crowd in that building for, throughout the convention, obviously not the average voter, are ready for it and willing to be willing to um, uh, lift any kind of disbelief, to suspend the disbelief of what's happening because they have such a low regard for the American people. They feel that they can gaslight you in this manner and you will believe it. And she's 100% correct. She's 100% right. There are people that believe it. There are, there are people out there who literally say or will hear, trust me. And they'll, they'll trust people, you know? And it happens all the time. But when you have a calculated evil group of people behind this reptilian, this snake that is heading the Democratic party right now running for president then you you got to realize the strength behind that and how persuasive they will be and how many more people they will trick into believing that they have their best interest in mind and that all the things that they want they will have and 
every problem that exists now is actually the fault of a man who was in office eight years ago. Yeah. I'm sure you and I, we all here watching, tuning in, interested in this video or even a regular subscriber to the channel, perhaps maybe even a member over on Patreon or a member to the channel here on YouTube. We don't fall for this. And if we did, we won't ever again. And that's why we have these conversations. That's why we have these chats. That's why we make these videos. That's why we engage with the community. That's why we try and help inform and educate. This is not to tear down the left and tear down Kamala Harris and, and tear down Democrats. This is to help inform and educate and uplift everyone and this country with the help, of course, of Donald Trump, J.D. Vance, and now Robert F. Kennedy Jr. and Nicole Shanahan, Tulsi Gabbard, Elon Musk, Vivek Ramaswamy. Who else am I missing? Hell, we can even include Joe Rogan in the mix because he brings on some interesting guests and has some really good conversations that really have people scratching their heads and beginning to open their eyes and wake up, unplug from the matrix and choose to take the red pill. What did you think of her speech? Do you want me to be the judge or the prosecutor? <laughs> <laughs> well, look, you know, she's the first bait and switch candidate we've ever had run for president. After three nights, we finally do hear from her. Uh, and uh, she is basically whomever you want her to be. <laughs> <laughs> so we heard from <laughs> Michelle Obama. We heard from Barack Obama. We heard from Oprah Winfrey. Mm -hmm. Was this Kamala's speech better than any of those speeches? Yeah, I... Yes, it yeah, was. Yeah, it was. Do you think she really why was? Because that's it. I mean, why those people are me powerful I I speakers. They were all fantastic speakers. I had never seen Michelle Obama speak live, and I thought it was one of the more incredible things I'd ever seen in my life. Just hands Just down. Just hands down. Nobody really likes Jessica Tarlov, do they? <laughs> and one of the most incredible things you've seen in your entire life, I would agree, quite possibly the most incredible 21, 22, 20, I don't remember how many minutes it was of blatant, flat out, ball face lies and hypocrisy of gaslighting. And what Tucker Carlson said on his podcast, on his show, not just lies, but the opposite of the truth. And those are the worst. But I also think that Kamala Harris did a really good job and she did exactly what she needed to do. She's right. She did exactly what she needed to do, which was exactly what she was instructed to do by her handlers. She's doing her job, basically. And if her job is to be a cackling, lying piece of shit, then she's excelling. And you can judge how strong her speech was by the strength of Donald Trump's meltdown. That was a meltdown. She calls President Trump an unserious man. And yet this is the candidate that is unserious altogether, that relies on vibes and hyena laughing. Fox News alert. RFK Jr. dropping the biggest bombshell yet of the 2024 race. He's suspending his campaign for president and endorsing Donald Trump. Donald Trump hammering Kamala's DNC speech while back on the campaign trail in Las Vegas. Watch. Last night, the speech, she made uh, 26 different things that were lies. She lied. She didn't mention the border. She didn't mention inflation. She didn't mention the bad economy. She didn't mention crime. She didn't mention any of the things that she's supposed to be mentioning. But she mentioned Trump 21 times or some crazy thing. Did you see the beginning? Thank you. 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 I said, what the hell is wrong with her? <laughs> and here's what Trump was talking about. It was all style, no substance in Kamala's DNC speech. And yet this is the candidate that is unserious altogether, that relies on vibes and hyena laughing to persuade us that what we see in our bank accounts and on the streets and the safety that we feel and the drugs infiltrating our families and everything, that there's nothing to see here. So I call to them when they say that President Trump is, is darkness and portends the future of the mm -hmm. threat of democracies at stake. Nothing is more that than Kamala Harris. Like if you agree. And in terms of Jessica Tarlov saying that Donald Trump, his response to Kamala Harris's DNC speech was a meltdown. Okay, I guess <laughs> if that's what you want to call it. 
Um, I would probably consider it to be one of the most triumphant clapbacks of all time in history. Outshining and outperforming her at the same venue in Phoenix, Arizona. Oh yeah, and also at the same time introducing your newest endorsement, RFK Jr. And did I mention that it was a packed house? 20 plus thousand people, thousands more turned away, tens of thousands more turned away. Oh, and by the way, they weren't paid actors and invite only. Really? So it starts on Truth Social while she's speaking, right? Are they talking about me in all capitals? Yes, of course, we're talking about you. Then he moves on, he starts calling Brett and Martha. When they try to inject a dose of reality into it, like you're not really leading in the polls. And welcome to Rasmussen Reports, the pollster who is attacked most for not towing the line. And that should tell you alone that we have information that's worth listening to. Quick stop at this chart, and everybody knows this, this is the summation of all the individual nightly Trump versus Harris results. And this is something that you're absolutely not gonna see from any other pollster. In fact, most pollsters right now are tripping over themselves to not report data. And we are literally showing every single respondent that we've ever asked about the 2024 election. So you can see the trend and you can see that we are not hiding information. And it's very plain as day exactly what's happening here. You know, and let me tell you, we have a lot of worthwhile information today. In fact, this video has more Trump versus Kamala Harris numbers than we've ever released in any of our videos to date. We have over 5,000 national respondents for the 2024 race. Basically what it boils down to is that Donald Trump is still beating Kamala Harris, although maybe not by as many points as he was beating Biden about six weeks ago. But if that's news for you, then basically it's because the entire polling industry is colluding with the mainstream media to create this false narrative that somehow Kamala Harris is now winning big and essentially running away with the 2024 race. And I'm here to tell you that nothing could be further from the truth. She's doing a little bit better bit by bit, but it's hard to say that she really has much in the way of momentum. So how foolish of me to sit here and provide you guys, or how foolish of us to base this all off of facts and statistical data, real world empirical information collected from actual voters. And instead we should just take the word of Jessica Tarlov and her opinion. So it was a meltdown and it continued today in Las Vegas. And the evidence of how well she did was in cold hard facts. In she doesn't, did she earn any primary votes? Did the Democrats even have a primary? No. In terms of what she said during her speech, the reason why she gave a part, no, not a partisan speech is because she's again engaging in this fakery that she's continuing by claiming all of these things, that she's a moderate, that she actually cares about the border. And then finally, they really tried last night to turn her into the commander in chief. This is why you had Leon Panetta speaking right ahead of her, why they showed her speech from West Point and why they inserted some foreign policy into her speech, completely ignoring the fact that none of the wars that she talked about existed under former president Donald Trump. They are trying to portray that she was not part of the past three and a half years, that all of the pain she's discussing that has been inflicted on the American people somehow is Trump's fault and that she hasn't been part of the Biden-Harris administration, which, by the way, the White House for three and a half years has been very specific about including her on all of these big projects that she has gone around the country and touted. So. Good. I, Palestinian I'm say supporters the, in. There were more American flags at the DNC than there were oh, at the RNC. Yeah. Patriotism is cool when it's new. Yeah. The American flags are back is. in the Democratic Party. Yeah, because that's, 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 like that's not the flags they like to. That's not the flags they like to sell. They like to burn the American flag and Did you raise the Palestinian the flag. Oh, and her on Israel was that good enough for you? No, no. It was not. How is that possible? How is it possible? Yeah. What do you mean it was, how because was it not possible? Because she dignified the existence she of Palestine. She wrote a letter that somebody, she wrote, actions speak louder than words. That's the one what? thing we've learned about. You can say, you can tell me it's raining, mm -hmm. but when it smells like pee, it's still what pee. What did she do about the Jewish <laughs> students who couldn't get into their classes? I didn't hear her talking about that. What are right. Now it's important. Would it all, would it just be acceptable for all of us to come to an agreement here that Jessica Tarlov is a complete moron? Or maybe better yet, she is just the most deranged of all the TDS affected, infected. And she just truly hates Donald Trump for whatever reason it may be. Or 
does this automatically mean that we can put Jessica Tarlov into a category of not only being the least liked of the entire cast here on The Five or throughout Fox News in general, but she also hates America. Because anybody who would logically try and sit down and debate and argue how Kamala Harris is telling the truth or is doing a good thing or is best for this country sounds like a treason. Doesn't sound very, doesn't, doesn't sound like a good idea to me. How about you guys? K Jr. is spoiling Kamala's post DNC party. He's dropping out of the race for president and endorsing Donald Trump for president. In my heart, I no longer believe that I have a realistic path to electoral victory. The chronic disease crisis was one of the primary reasons for my running for president, along with ending censorship in the Ukraine war. It's the reason I've made the heart-wrenching decision to suspend my campaign and to support President Trump. We are aligned on many key issues. In those meetings, he suggested that we join forces as a unity party. He makes a decision, though, to drop out only in the primary states, it seems. So will that little bit help Donald Trump? The Trump campaign saying this helps Trump. They're saying in the seven battlegrounds he was polling between three and five percent. And if those votes now go away, they say Trump gets about 60 mm, percent of those compared to what Harris would have gotten. And that translates to this judge. And this is big. In Arizona, that would mean 41,000 additional votes towards Donald Trump. That's like a lot Huge. bigger than the margin last time right. in Georgia almost 20,000 more votes for Donald Trump. You remember how tight these margins are. These little, these little shifts can really play a big role. Apparently he went to the Harris campaign and flirted with them and said, hey, you know, you want an endorsement? Cause you know, maybe I could get a cabinet position and then she just went dark. And I don't think Jesse Waters is talking about her skin tone, but we have good news coming out of Arizona and not just the Unbelievable announcement from Donald Trump and RFK Jr. yesterday, which if you haven't seen that video, go check it out next. Joining us now is Vivek Ramaswamy, former GOP presidential candidate. Vivek, uh, just in, the Supreme Court has just ruled in a 5-4 decision, uh, giving partial victory to Republicans trying to enforce proof of citizenship when voting in Arizona. Looks like they uh, did not grant a stay, and that law is going to go into effect. Thoughts tonight? Well, I think that's an obvious development, but the fact that that was controversial tells you where we are. It was 5-4. The fact that four liberal justices went the other way show that you have a Supreme Court that even still looks at the end and works backwards. But I think this is a good development, especially in a battleground state like Arizona. And that completely debunks and goes against Kamala Harris and the Democrats talking point of Donald Trump's handpicked Supreme Court because these folks are not playing with the full deck. To think that there would be a challenge, a consideration, opposition, that elections should be including non-U.S. citizens. Come on, guys. Come on. But Harris is saying, oh, you know, this is no big deal. Don't... That's not true. The numbers speak for themselves. Well, you know, Katie Harris refused to meet with him. And he said, I mean, RFK was clear. There's a lot of things that he disagrees with Donald Trump on. And so uh, it kind of speaks to this idea that the Democrats are so full of joy and unity. And yet Harris wouldn't even meet with him. And yet Donald Trump was supposed to be this hater was willing to sit down with him apparently several times where they hashed out some of the issues. Yeah. Um, speaks more for Donald Trump than the Democrats. Yeah, it, it, it's a reflection of the Republican side of the political aisle willing to at least have a conversation about issues that they disagree with. Democrats just put up the stiff arm and don't want to talk about any of it. RFK Jr. shouldn't take it personally because Kamala Harris doesn't really meet with anybody. Uh, we're going to talk about that later in the show. He's looking pretty good in a lot of these states, Georgia, Michigan, Wisconsin. Virginia is a really interesting one. He was taking up about 8% of the vote there. Uh, and if he gets some of those voters to go from him to Donald Trump, he could potentially win Virginia, especially since it's a very popular state in mm -hmm. terms of who the governor is. But I think the most, most important thing is everybody's been trying to 
frame him like some kooky third-party candidate. Mm -hmm. Listen to what he actually has to say. Listen to what Nicole Shanahan, who was his vice presidential candidate, has to say about the censorship, about why they left the Democratic Party, about why is it that they were so afraid to have him even on the ballot, why they're suing to keep his name mm -hmm. off of the ballot. That doesn't seem very Democratic. You might, not, you might even argue that that's how you win elections, but it's certainly not how you should operate as a party that claims to be standing up for democracy. And, you know, Jessica, he, he wasn't just talking about, you know, being sued, but he talked about real censorship in a portal that was set up in the White House with the FBI, the DHS, uh, the CIA, where all the information about him came in. Look, the fact that the Democrats wouldn't even give him Secret Service protection when his own father and uncle were assassinated. I mean, it really, he, he took down the Democrat Party, talked about the military industrial complex and the wars that go on that didn't go on when Donald Trump was there. Well, he didn't take down the Democratic Party. If the election was hold to, held today, it's a, a coin flip and probably advantage Harris. So we seem to be doing okay without him. And his values do not coincide with our values anymore. Once I've said it a thousand times, Jessica Tarlov is a complete fucking idiot, okay? Either she's dumb, dumber than dumb, dumber than just beyond belief, or she refuses to accept the reality, okay? And Elon, he conducted a poll. Let's see if I can find it. Uh, if the election were to be held today. <laughs> Elon Musk's poll on X has just ended. 5.8 million people voted with 73% in favor of Donald Trump. Don't believe anything the mainstream media says. There is no way in hell that Trump loses this election. We will get this bull run for Bitcoin and save America in the process. <laughs> that one's from Smiley Trump. But th these polls are shared everywhere. Uh, 73, 73, 27, 76, 24, uh, 73, 27 on this one. It, it's it's clear. It's 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 right here. Either she's she's completely oblivious or she's batshit crazy or both. Or she's on the payroll and Kamala Harris and the Democrats and the left, the deep state are paying her to be this dumb. He's willing to betray things that were core to who he is. You knew him from Westchester, an environmental lawyer, someone who cares deeply about mm -hmm. saving the planet from climate change, something that Donald Trump doesn't care about at all. He's someone who purports to care about a woman's right to choose. Donald Trump sent it back to the states. There are women bleeding out with, you know, in. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. I get it. Yeah, but no, but, but that's. Don, but that, that's not but it is that is that's, that's why that's why harris wouldn't meet with him why? and they oh you know why she didn't meet with him she doesn't talk to anybody who are you kidding I'm, I'm not kidding anyone i'm being truthful about it he is anti-vax which is dangerous I never he's understood. not completely <clears throat> anti-vax oh, oh he's just 90 he percent anti-vax no he is okay, not listen. were you happy Houston. about the vaccine from covid i mean really yeah, yeah i was i I had it one time. That's great. And It'll force everyone else to do what you want to do. All right. Anyway. All right. Anyway, I've had about enough of, I've had about a, a, as much of that as I can possibly stand to, to take today, guys. And if you would, do me a solid. Give this video a thumbs up. Show your appreciation for having, for me having to sit through Jessica Tarlov and literally wanting to bang my head against this wall here. I really would appreciate it. And what was missing more than anything else was any list of accomplishments she could cite that she has achieved over the last three and a half years. Now, the reason for this is simple. There are no accomplishments. Harris, Biden, economic policies, they have failed. You feel it every day. Their immigration policies have resulted in murder, in rape and violence, and is costing all of you billions of dollars every single year. Harris, Biden, energy policies are breaking the bank for over half the country. They don't need to be this high. Their support of defund, dismantle, no bail laws are similarly a disaster for the we the people. And Harris, Biden, foreign policy policy has frankly emboldened every bad actor on the world stage. Well, but wait, there's more and it only gets better. <laughs> this may be a reoccurring theme here because normally you would expect 
to here, it's only going to get worse. But this is not all about doom. This is not all about gloom. This is not all about bad news. This is actually about good things to come. Good things happening. There's 73 days until November 5th and there's 135 days until January 6th. And then our warrior president, Donald J. Trump, Mr. Fight, 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 Mr. They're coming for you, but I'm standing in their way and I'm never moving. Make America great again will soon take office. Our warrior president will rescue us from this crazy, woke, liberal, progressive, democratic leftist ideology with the help of some friends and some very, very strong and powerful allies. We are both in this to do what's right for the country. That's one thing I can tell you. He lost his father and uncle in service to our country, and Bobby himself was subject to repeated threats to his safety during the course of his campaign while being denied protection by the Harris-Biden administration. And this is a tribute in honor of Bobby. I am announcing tonight that upon my election, I will establish a new independent Presidential Commission on Assassination Attempts. Now, before the Trump rally today, during a momentous speech, well, Kennedy spoke openly about the political machine that will stop at nothing to keep, consolidate power at all costs. Take a look. What most alarms me isn't how the Democratic Party conducts its internal affairs or runs its candidates. What alarms me is the resort to censorship and media control and the weaponization of the federal agencies. When a U.S. president colludes with or outright coerces media companies to censor political speech, it's an attack on our most sacred right of free expression, and that's the very right upon which all of our other constitutional rights rest. And I think we all are in agreement here about just how important this really is. And I appreciate you guys so much for sharing these videos and helping to continue with this push and this fight for our freedom of speech, our ability to voice our concerns and be heard. And I can tell you guys right now, there are a few thousand of you being heard every single day over on Patreon. And uh, it's amazing to be building this community of like-minded individuals all focused on similar goals and similar interests, sharing information and having discussions and conversations that in certain places aren't, it's not acceptable here. There's a link down below in the description and you guys are more than welcome to join. There's a button at the top of the page where you can join for free or you can support and help us by choosing any one of the four tiers that we have. We have four tiers, make America great again. Thank you all so much. We love you guys. And we are so excited and humbled and honored to be able to do this with you guys and do it together. Thank you. RFK Jr.'s running mate, she knows the deal. Kamala Harris is dangerous to me because she is the ultimate puppet for an organization that has, I believe, since President Obama, not actually run real people. Greg's Leftovers. Mmm. Yes, it's Leftovers, where I read the jokes we didn't use this week. And as always, it's my first time reading them. So if they suck, let Joe Mackey be Kamala's new speechwriter. <laughs> Kamala Harris officially got the nomination last night. You know how it works. When a candidate has enough delegates, he or she gets the nomination. It's the same way they select a girlfriend for Tom Cruise. <laughs> <laughs> Kamala Harris accepted the nomination on behalf of the people, specifically the 14 million people who didn't vote for her. <laughs> people accused the DNC of leaking that Beyonce was performing to get people to watch. That is a new low, if true. By the way, catch Elvis Presley on Monday's Gutfeld. Yeah. TMZ owned up to falsely reporting on Beyonce's appearance. They should stick to reporting on famous people's drunk driving arrests, like Tim Walls. Yeah. 
Dana Bash claimed the DNC is trying to appeal to men that aren't testosterone laden with Tim Walz and Doug Emhoff, causing organizers to wonder why she left out Randy Weingarten. <laughs> A new study said 60% of supermarket baby foods are unhealthy. Wait, I'm gonna have to feed it, send one woman? <laughs> <laughs> Quick show of hands. Was it just me or was it kind of odd to see how at the DNC, whoever was in charge of the camera zoomed in on a man holding a baby after Kamala advocates for abortion on demand? I mean, they even had abortion vans and abortion clinics, little pop ups outside the DNC in between the front door, the gates and the protesters. <laughs> The man in this video probably will be seen later on at some point in time trying to chest feed this baby. But, but, wait, there's more. Isn't there always? Because Elon Musk shared how this is extremely concerning. Wall Street Silver posted a share from Medium stating something is broken in our culture. Why is this happening? The headline reads, 45% of women estimated to be single and childless by 2030. Oh boy, you know what that means, right? Jennifer Aniston is gonna flip her shit on J.D. Vance for that childless cat lady's comment. <laughs> Page six says that Jennifer Aniston slams VP candidate J.D. Vance for calling women without kids childless cat ladies. We're effectively run in this country via the Democrats, via, via our corporate oligarchs, by a bunch of childless cat ladies who are miserable at their own lives and the choices that they've made. And so they wanna make the rest of the country miserable too. And it's just a basic fact. You look at Kamala Harris, Pete Buttigieg, AOC, the entire future of the Democrats is controlled by people without children. And how does it make any sense that we've turned our country over to people who don't really have a direct stake in it? To restore reproductive freedom as president of the United States, I will proudly sign it into law. While walking in Chicago this week, a delegate from Texas was robbed at gunpoint. But in Chicago, that's just how they say hello. <laughs> now that the DNC is over and libs are basking in the glow of empty nothingness, we'd like to recap some of the lowlights from the week. But because I'm feeling generous, I'm going to spare you the clips of Kamala Harris. <laughs> okay. First up, Dr. Jill. She tried to rewrite her husband's history. And weeks ago, when I saw him dig deep into his soul and decide to no longer seek re-election and endorse Kamala Harris. Really? <laughs> Is that how you remember it? That's like saying Lincoln quit on the advice of his doctors. <laughs> You know what? How do you talk I to him? Is my only what I have to do. Right. He made the decision for the country. My concern was not about the president. It was about his campaign. But it's the current president, who's a Democrat, who's, who's currently miffed at you uh, and, and obviously has not, has, not called you, has not called you back. Does it bother you that he's upset at you? Well, we see, I'm not the leader or the speaker anymore. When I was, we spoke more regularly. Yeah. And now well, we you have know he's for a few yeah. weeks, but that would not be unusual. But there's been reporting. He's been uh, pretty plain about this himself, that he's, he's upset at you. Does that bother you that your friends are upset at you? What bothers me would have been the reelection of Donald Trump as president of the United States. That's what bothers me. And that's what bothers me. And I think that would bother him. But, there you have but, it. but we, we have a lot in the bank with each other in terms of our Catholicism, our, our dedication to democratic values and, and vision for our country and the rest. I, I, Do you and Paul I, plan to have he and Jill to Napa or maybe SF next year for dinner? When, uh, Can you envision that? Our plans would not have changed for what we might have done otherwise. 
Nope. So he's still welcome at the Pelosi home. Are you kidding me? He is. Right? Joe Biden is welcome any place he wants to Mr. President, to go. you heard it. Well, there's been a lot of unity, a lot of joy, a lot of hope about the future. Uh, President Biden will go down in history as one of the most consequential presidents of all time. And then he made a selfless decision to pass the torch to Kamala Harris, who is ready and willing and able to get the job done. We've seen it. She's got an amazing partner in Tim Walls. And so we're optimistic about the future, but also we understand that there's going to be a lot of work that needs to be done over the next 75 days to get this done for the American people. Can you give some insight, Leader Jeffries, now with a little distance from it? Um, obviously, you were respectful of President Biden, gave him the time and space to make his decision about what it was like behind the scenes as you all waited to see what he was going to decide, perhaps any pressure that may have been applied in any direction. What was it like in those days and weeks? Well, from the House perspective, uh, we thought it was important to speak amongst ourselves and have conversations that were clear and comprehensive and candid so that when I had the opportunity to speak to high level members of the administration and ultimately to President Biden, I could communicate the full breadth of perspective. Uh, but we also believed that President Biden, who has served this country incredibly well over a 50 plus year legendary career, uh, was going to work through this. It would ultimately be his decision. Uh, and he made a decision that he felt was best for the country uh, and for those who he has served with and led so capably during his time in office. And, you know, there are some critics who say that this was a, a coup. Uh, they say that uh, that Kamala Harris didn't get any votes in the primary, even though she was on the ticket, she wasn't the head of the ticket, and that it's anti-democratic for this to happen. What do you say to those critics? Well, I think that that's stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's really stupid. Why is that? Yeah, that's really stupid. We, uh, uh, he decides not to run. Uh, she no, puts her didn't. name out there. Anybody else could have put their name out there, too. They didn't. The president endorsed her. That was a, a, a big boost, of course. But uh, the, the word coup, unless they don't know what that word means, uh, is, it's really a dumb statement for them to make. There's an intangible. It's different. How are you feeling about the switch? I mean, the switch. <laughs> now we went through a very open process, <laughs> a very inclusive process. Uh, it was bottom up. I don't know if uh, you know that. Yes, that's what I've been told to say. Yes, it was, uh, uh, it was, a, it was a blitz <laughs> primary, I believe, that's is what right. they called it. It's a very, very fast blitz. <laughs> yes. I think it was, it was a blink uh, primary, so we call that. Yeah. Oh, a 30 minute uh, convention. Yeah, 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 you know, between a tweet and uh, another tweet. It's amazing yeah. how it happened. Yeah, it's yeah. been amazing. But it is, what is amazing is the, how unified everybody is. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's next level. So, do you feel like you've weathered the storm on, on this issue of whether you should be on the ticket or not? Look, 14 million people voted for me to be the nominee in the Democratic Party. Okay? I listen to them. As I recall it, Joe was flung out of Air Force One without a parachute. <laughs> and as for the woman who threw him out, old Nancy looked less than thrilled during a We Love Joe chant when the camera cut to her. <laughs> and who could blame her? Stabbing someone in the back is draining. Really takes it out of you. Just ask the Obamas. <laughs> Meanwhile, here's one woman who's got the energy of a coked up hamster. Next week, we got to go back to working the way we work for a collective bargaining contract, that way we work for anything that is important to us, any of the things that are important. Every single day, we need to fight to get Kamala Harris and Tim Walz elected. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? And I think I may have a pretty good idea or know where she might have got that Coke from. <laughs> Please welcome Nancy Pelosi. Cocaine is a hell of a drug. <laughs> 
Well, what are you looking out for next between now and September 10th, that debate mm-hmm. that everyone, because we know June 27th changed the course of this election forever. That was the date of the Biden-Trump debate. What are you looking out for between now and the Trump-Harris debate? What does Kamala Harris do to beef up what she has said from a policy perspective? Who does she choose to sit down with? Remember, she said she would do at least one interview before August 31st. Well, she's got about a week left to make that. I think she should do more, but she needs to do at least one, in my opinion. Who does she sit down with? How does it go? Because if you remember back, her interview with uh, Lester Holt on the border and NBC wasn't great for her, and she stopped kind of doing them. So has she gotten better in that regard? For Trump, he has been scrambling and rambling for about a month. Um, You know, I think the question is, can he find the message against Harris? He's tried a lot of things. I don't think anything's really stuck yet. Can he find something to hit her with while being disciplined on economy and the border? Yeah, I think he can. I think he can. He's also enlisted the help of Tulsi Gabbard to coach him along. And maybe he'll even get Beyonce to show up. You know, and that that's it doesn't seem like a gigantic challenge, but for someone like Donald Trump who lacks that sort of discipline, it really is. Donald Trump doesn't lack discipline. and He's definitely not going to be taking advice or giving two shits about what this dude has to say. And if anything, the challenge should be uh, more along the lines of what kids on TikTok are doing these days and just try not to laugh because expect Kamala Harris to just laugh and cackle, say nothing and or just lie. And that is if she even shows up. If it doesn't get canceled, get postponed, I wouldn't put it past her. And then see how the media spins it and flips it that Donald Trump's afraid to debate. Really? How much you wanna bet? How much you wanna bet we see a repeat of Joe Biden and not just a disastrous debate, but a repeat of the reason why Kamala can't make it is because she (coughs) tested positive for COVID. No news conferences for Harris. No sit-down interviews. The, the questions How the coverage has made this happen, enough. Tom. Yeah. She's doing uh, <laughs> so, interviews with cre- content creators today, and right. You know. So I, let, you let's know, call it the yeah. let's call it the Harris honeymoon, right? When does right. the Harris honeymoon end? Because at some point she's going to have to sit down. She's going to have to do a serious interview. She's going to have to go unscripted. Maybe even a full news conference, but it's, it has to happen. Oh, absolutely, has to happen. And you know, you, we're starting to see her talk to reporters. Like yesterday, she spoke to some reporters in Pittsburgh, and they asked her, "How are you going to pay for your economic?" plan, right? And she didn't really make a lot of sense. She just kept saying over and over again, it would be a return on investment. It would be a return on investment. She said it four times over a, you know, 30, you know, 60 second. And it just wasn't very strong. You could tell she's a little rusty when she's not on her teleprompter. And she hasn't always done well in the past when in a one-on-one, when you saw what happened with your colleague, Lester Holt. And so I think that this is actually a disservice to her. They're really building this up to be a very momentous moment when she finally sits down with a network anchor. And she could make one wrong move. And that's the entire news cycle. Talk to me about it. This drives me nuts how many political strategists are their own worst enemy. They always want to limit. Look, I think this is what, if Biden is angry that he does not, that this isn't his convention, you should blame everybody around him. You could have set the country up over the last three years to get used to Grandpa Joe if they let Grandpa Joe out there right. all the time. And every, look, over time, people the got debate used. was a shocker for right, people. Right, you because know? they hadn't seen any version of it. But maybe if they had seen it, there would have been more tolerance for it. And you do exactly what Tara said. They are making it so that the first interview she does be so much pressure. becomes a huge pressure. I, I'm not as convinced they're going to do the big sit-down with Chuck, a traditional network. Is, yeah. I think you'll see them with more what I would call allied media. Right. And I think that's, and that's more likely. What, and that's what Joe way, Biden did, yeah. And that's what Donald Trump does. He doesn't, he's not going to unfriendly places anymore. Look, we're, he we come to, from but this, he doesn't anymore. Obviously, we come, we're all reporters here. We want to ask questions. We want to inform our viewers and our readers. So in this sense, we, we do have a dog in this fight. But I, I do want to ask you, could this really happen? I mean, early voting is going to start very soon. Yeah. Could early voting start without her having really been scrutinized by the media at all? Well, it depends on your definition of scrutinizing. And on one hand, all we have is her last campaign. Right. And you would think this is something that I wouldn't want if I was the Harris campaign. Right. But the campaign stuff you don't want out there. Paints are much more liberal. And do it now before the party. Right. Right. So it, it does, in that sense, that's surprising. But, you know, the way everything gets weaponized on social media, there's a reason why, you know, unfortunately, why you see fewer and fewer 
uh, elected officials sitting down with truly sort of dispassionate media, I call yeah. it. Yeah. They won't do it because the fear is not the questions we ask. The fear is the 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 one bad answer they get that gets weaponized and used and over and over again. And, times. and that's, it's in her head. Yeah. She has always had this issue because Fox, early on in this vice presidency, took every wrong moment and just amplified. I don't think Kamala Harris is going to make one mistake. I think she's going to make a lot of mistakes. And if she even agrees to do a sit down interview. But I don't know who this guy is. But to say that Donald Trump doesn't go places where the unfriendly places are you freaking kidding me the debate the first debate september 10th is going to be in the most unfriendly place he could possibly be outside of cnn or butler pennsylvania if thomas matthew crooks was still alive or the incompetent secret service agents were still employed yeah and it's not just fox amplifying kamala harris's wrong moment it's the fact that kamala harris has consistently had wrong moments she has zero accomplishments She's gotten less accomplished than she has gotten votes to be the Democratic nominee. Think about it. But the Democrats have their plan, they have their strategy, and that's why Joe Biden is not around anymore. And it's because they essentially are only going to do what they can to try and create this contrast to Donald Trump, being a younger candidate, a female candidate, a candidate of color, whatever. But just think about it like this, imagine, what would happen if all of a sudden Donald Trump started to campaign like Kamala Harris is campaigning or has been campaigning, campaigning, and he no longer did interviews or sat down with any press uh, or any mainstream media. And he just reread the same script over and over again at every rally and oh, also created falsehoods and told lies and mistruths about the left which actually that would probably backfire because in order to do that, then you would have to, in essence, paint a picture that makes them look better than they actually are because the opposite of what they're doing is the complete and total destruction of this entire country, let alone the world. And even if he did that, he'd still win.